Hello friends and strangers, we're gonna be making something like this. So if you're interested, continue watching. We will begin by setting up the scene. You don't have to do this part, I just don't want to have a blank background. We will create an image and change its name to background. Also, make sure the rec transform is set to stretch, that way the image fits the whole screen. Set the color and alpha as you wish. Next, we create a panel and rename it Main Panel. This is where your console will be. We need to be able to receive text input, so we create an input field inside our Main Panel and name it Console Input. Name is really important for when we're setting up uh, the variables through code, so just make sure that you name it Console Input. Then move it to where you like. You don't have to make your console look just like mine. I'm going for a very generic look. Now we create a scroll view and rename it Log, then move it to fit nicely inside our main panel. We uncheck Horizontal and delete that horizontal scroll bar. Since most of our console logs are only vertical, I don't think I've ever seen a console log that was horizontal, so yeah, get rid of that thing. Inside our logs viewport, we have a content game object. This will contain all of our log entries. For them to fit nicely, we will need a content size fitter and a vertical layout group. We uncheck height and check width for child size. On our content size fitter, we change the vertical fit to prefer size. We need to move our content pivot so that log entries spawn at the bottom. We change our pivot location in the rec transform component. Next, we create an image inside the content game object and name it CMD entry or command entry. Add a layout element to it and change its height and color to something more pleasant looking. Add a text to your CMD game object. Play around with the text values to fit your game. Make sure the rec transform is set to stretch so it fits the size of your CMD entry game object. I'm going to create a new folder to store our materials and prefabs. Create a prefab from our CMD entry game object by dragging it onto your project. Now, if you duplicate your CMD entry, you will see the scroll view increasing in size to fit all of your entry logs. Pretty cool, right? Duplicate or log game object and rename it command list. Remove all scroll bars and place it above or below your input field. This will contain the list of your available commands. Disable the command list game object and then create a new empty game object. Rename it console and drag your background as well as the main panel into it and then disable the console game object. Create a new folder for our scripts. Create a new c -sharp script and call it console manager. Add this to your canvas and then open it on your coding software of choice. And let's begin coding. We need to set up some variables first. Create a list called commands. This will contain all of our commands. Make sure it's public so we can access it through the inspector. Next, set up a bool variable. This will allow you to remove or keep entry logs. This flood is the lifetime of your entries, if the previously created bool is set to true. Now we will create a key code so that we can set it in the inspector window. This will open and close the console. I'm just going to set up some headers for the sake of organization. Create two game object variables. These hidden variables can be 
public and you can set them up in the inspector but I like to keep variables hidden as much as possible to make the editor window less crowded. Since they are private variables we need to set them up through code. I am not gonna go into detail on how to set game object and transform variables. This is basic coding and I feel like you should know this by now. So on to update. If we press our console key, we enable the console game object. Now we need to select the input field so that when we open the console we can type right away and don't have to move our mouse and select it. When you press enter, it removes your selection so we need to reset it. Create a new function and call it command. This function will take in a string variable. Go back to our enter input and add the function. We need that string variable, so we use the text from the console input. Also, to avoid players from spamming the same command over and over and over and over again, we set the text of our input to nothing. You don't really need this, it is up to you if you want it in. I personally like it better this way, so yep. If the text from our console input says my command, we create a log entry. Also, we check if it can die, and if it can, we destroy it by the delay. Now we set the text of our entry to whatever we like. We need to set up our similar command list, so create a new public function. If the container has any game objects, then we loop for each game object inside the list and destroy it. Create a new function and call it create command list. Now, back in our loop, we need to check for the end of the loop, and so if it is the end, then we call this function. And we also call it if our child count is not bigger than zero. On our newly created function, we check if the console input is not empty. If it isn't, we check the input text to see if it contains some similar letters to our command list. If it does contain similar letters, we create a command list prefab, then we set its text to the name of the similar command. Now we need to enable and disable the command list if it contains zero similar letters to what we have typed in our console input. Back in Unity, we need to create a new prefab. Go to our command list game object and create a text under the content. Move this as you see fit. I have it looking nicely. To test it, I duplicate it and yep, it's working nicely. Let's get rid of the duplicates and rename the main one to CMD list, then turn it into a prefab. In our console manager script, let's set the console key to tab. Drag our cmd entry prefab into the log prefab slot and our cmd list prefab into our cmd list prefab slot. Change the size of our command list to 1 and name it my command. Alright, last step. Go to our console input UI element and under on value change, click the plus button. Then drag our console manager script and select the um, what's it called the check similar command function that we created earlier. Click play and let's try it out. So if we type my my command pops up. Type something random and it disappears. Try it out. Type my command. Press enter and you will see your entry log. That's our console setup done. Now let's do a quick example how you can execute different things with this console. You don't have to copy this part, this is just an example. I'm going to create a new script and call it console functions. 
I'm gonna add it to the console manager game object and quickly set up some functions to change the size and color of our level objects. Back in our console manager script, I need to set up a reference to my console function script. Then, under our command function, we toy around with it a little bit. Duplicate it to make more functions and change its values. Back in Unity, we need to set up our commands list under our console manager. The text must always match. Just make sure the texts are always matching. Also, let's enable can die and set the delay to uh, 3, I guess. Drag our level game objects to our reference slots inside the console functions, then let's test it up. Nice, our similar command list is working perfectly. Let's run some commands. Open and close the console. Let's disable this and add a bunch of entry locks. You can see the scroll view getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Everything is working nicely. You can change these functions to better fit your game. Say, um, increase the player's health, move the player to a certain location, I don't know. Have fun with it. Thank you for watching and I hope this was useful for you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.